In this video, we're talking about line editing. There are a lot of different types of lines and splines and arcs and curves that can be drawn in Form Z from scratch. Starting with the most basic type of line work, we're just going to choose the line tool and click to establish a beginning and end for two different lines. It's important to establish up front that these lines that we're going to be editing are coplanar. So if you can imagine these two lines extending beyond their initial points, we can see that they would theoretically come together at a common corner point here. If these lines are not coplanar, they're not on the same plane, doesn't mean they have to be on the reference plane, but they do need to be on the same plane, then line editing operations will not work. So starting with two lines that do not join, we're going to now open the edit palette and we're going to choose the trim tool. This tool does require two open wires to work successfully. ForMZ is expecting you to click toward the ends that you want to join. So I'm going to do just that and click on these two wires. It doesn't matter which order because there's just two wires that are necessary for the operation. So I'm going to click here on this wire because that's the end I want to join to this end of this wire. And you can see that it extends both of those to a common meeting point out here on the grid. Now, if I undo that and I click on the two ends opposite, you'll see that it does not do the operation. So Form Z is expecting you to click toward the end of the wire in which you want to join to the other end of the wire. And it really depends on where you click on that one too. So keep that in mind as you're doing these line editing operations. Looking at the tool options, we have an open option, a join option, and then we have a fillet or a bevel option. So if I go back and undo that, and let's go back and click on the trim tool again and click on join this time, let's look at what happens when we do that. Okay, now when I deselect this object and I highlight over it, it highlights as a single object. So the trim command with the join option is trimming and joining in one single operation rather than two separate operations. You'll notice in the edit palette we also have a join tool. So looking at a couple of the other options, we also have a fillet where we can set a radius or a distance. And again, if I click on these two objects, this is going to give us that fillet. And if I zoom in on that, let's take a look at what that looks like. You'll see we get a nice clean radius edge between those two lines. Now this command is not parametric, so if you wanted to change that number to something else, you'll notice if you type it in up here, it does not update. You actually would need to undo and choose the command again and type a new radius in like five feet and then click on those two lines again and it fillets them with a five foot radius. Now, depending on the scale of the model that you're working in or the tolerances that you're working with, sometimes a trim tool may not work as you might expect. So here with these two overlapping lines and I choose the trim tool, if I wanted to trim these two together to kind of match what we did over here, let's go ahead and click on those. I'm just using the open trim type and you can see that that worked fine. Now let's try to trim these two together down here you can see we didn't get quite what we expected. So Form Z doesn't always give you exactly what you want there. And that's where we're going to start looking at some of these other tools to help us out. So let's take a look at the break tool. If I use the break tool, I can now break a line at any location. So I'm going to click and break this line. And now we can see that we actually have two different parts. We have a part here and we have a part here. And I left a little bit of an overlap there. I can break this line as well to get that point. And if you wanted to, you could then delete these two pieces. And now we can trim, turn on the join feature and bring those two lines together. So sometimes it doesn't give you exactly what you were expecting and you may have to do a little bit of further manipulation to get there. Now let's talk about extending lines. I have two lines drawn on the reference plane. Again, these lines must be coplanar for this operation to work. And we have two different extend tools to choose from. We have extend segment and we have extend segment two. Let's begin with that one. So I'm going to extend this segment over to meet this one. Clicking on the first segment again at the end that I want to do the extension on and then clicking the line that I want to extend it to. We can see that it extends over and now meets that other line. That is a great way to get geometry to line up perfectly. Now the extend segment tool works a little bit differently in that it has a dynamic, a distance, and a percentage option. So clicking on the end of the line that I want to do an extension to, you can see I can retract it 
or extend it and the distance field is lit up here. So if I wanted to extend it in a negative number, I can do that. It brings the line to be shorter and I could type in minus 10 feet and it will retract that 10 feet back away. Or I can click on it and I could type in 10 feet to go the other direction if I wanted to do that. Or of course you can just eyeball it and do it dynamically. Now we also have a distance tool. So if you don't wanna do it dynamically, you know exactly how far you wanna go. We can go ahead and type a number in. And again, just clicking on that line, we're going to extend the end of this line five feet. If I click on this end of the line, we'll extend that end of the line five feet and so on and so forth. And negative numbers work too, so let's try that. Let's type minus 20 feet and clicking on the end of the line that we want to pull back 20 feet, we can do that and click on the end of this one, we can pull that back as well. The last option in this tool is percentage, and that extends or retracts a line as a percentage of its existing length. So if I cut this to 50%, I can now extend that line 50% longer than it currently is without having to know what that length is. The final option in there is to choose make new object for any one of these. So if I extend this line 50% longer than it currently is, and I click on this with make new object, You'll notice that it actually makes a new object separate from the original object that is now the extension. As we talked about a minute ago with the break tool, we can click anywhere along a line to break that into multiple pieces. But we can also use the break with line tool, and that will allow us to break off a line using another line as a slicing tool. So I'm going to follow the prompts palette and select the segment that I want to break. And then I'm going to select the segment that I want to break it with. And you'll notice now that there are two parts broken exactly at the intersection. Now, one of the other options under the break with line tool is to insert an opening. So let's illustrate what that looks like. I'm going to choose the line that I want to break. And I'm going to choose the line that I want to do the cutting. And the dimension of that break is the distance that was set in the tool option. So if I go to my measure tool and I measure from the end point of this line to the end point of that line, we can see it is exactly five feet, which is what we had in the tool option for that break. Now there's one other break tool that is not in the edit palette. It is found down here in the modify NURBS curves palette, and that is the C split tool. So this will split curves and one of the nice things about this is it actually lets you set the distances of the first and second curve when you split a curve so what i'm going to do is just kind of click anywhere along this curve and that is a preview point of the two different curves and you'll notice up here i can now type in different lengths of the curve so if i knew that i wanted this curve over here to be 10 feet instead of wherever i clicked on it i can now go back and edit that type that in and you can see that preview point moves over so that it is exactly 10 feet off of this end. If I wanted to flip that around, I can type 10 feet down here and it moves down to that end of the curve. So when splitting this into two different pieces, I now know exactly the length of this piece. And if I deselect that curve and then highlight it, you can see that that piece has been split off. And if I go to measure that dimension between those two points, we can see it's exactly 10 feet. So that can be another useful tool in your toolbox of line editing tools. So now let's talk about the join tool. And in order to join lines, they must already meet. And if you look at the icons here, you can tell that we're not extending or trimming lines together. We're just gonna join them where they meet at corners. I'm gonna draw a couple here, draw a line here and a line here. I'm gonna now trim those two lines together using the trim tool with the open tool option. So these lines are not joined. And now the join tool comes in when I wanna actually join those together and make a single object. So clicking on one and then clicking on the other now brings those together and welds them into a single piece. We can see that now we actually have a single object. Now let's take a look at the fillet tool. If I click on that, we have two different options. We can do a circular fillet or a bevel fillet. So just by clicking near that corner that I want to apply the fillet to, I click on it and it applies that radius at that dimension. Same thing goes for distance as we chose earlier. And you see now that these two numbers are parametric. By switching between them, I can update their size and it's visually updating here in the model as well. 
Same goes for bevel. I can click on my two lines where they come together at the corner that I want that to occur. And again, this number is parametric, so you can adjust it after the fact to any other number that you like. And you can see that it's updating visually. Next, we have the close tool that we're gonna look at. And that is when we have open wires and we wanna close this into a surface without having to draw another line or figure out another way to join that all up. We can just simply use this tool, click on that object. It will find the two open ends, close them off, and turn it into a surface, which could be useful if I wanted to reshape, for example, because now I could turn that into a solid. But with open wires like this, sometimes we just wanna connect the ends together. So I'm gonna choose the Connect Ends tool here. You'll notice that there are no tool options for this. We're just gonna click on the two ends of the lines that we wanna to connect together with another straight segment. So if I wanted to apply that to these two ends over here, I wanna choose the connect line tool, click on the end of the line that I wanna to connect to the other end of the line. And now that it is a closed shape, it actually fills in as a surface. Now the connect lines slash wires tool works a little bit differently. This one is actually looking for the end of a line and the beginning of another line. So if you don't know where you started and where you stopped when you were drawing these lines, there's a couple of other tools that you should be aware of. And let's go ahead and take a look at those options. So I'm gonna right click on my display options and choose my shaded work option since I'm working in shaded work mode. And down here toward the bottom of this palette, there's an interactive section where we can show direction of lines. And if I click on that, you'll notice now that we see a little arrow show up in the midpoint of each line segment. And we can see which direction that line is now flowing. And we're gonna use this now to illustrate how the connect line tool works. Again, it's looking for the end of a first line to connect it to the beginning of a second line. So using these two lines as examples, the end of this first line is down here in this lower quadrant. The beginning of this line is up here in this upper quadrant. And we can tell because of the direction of those. So if I click anywhere on these two lines, it doesn't really matter where I click, it's going to look for the end and the beginning. So if I, even if I click at the opposite ends of these two lines, like the beginning and the end, thinking it's going to connect those together, it's not. It's going to connect the end of the first line back to the beginning of the second line. And that's when this show direction can come in very handy. So if that wasn't what you expected to do, of course you can reverse the direction of these lines. And that is found down here in the manage tool palette. There is a reverse tool and watch the arrowhead on this line. When I click on it, you can see it now flipped that line's direction. And if I use the connect line tools, again, clicking anywhere on these two lines, it is now gonna connect the end of this line to the new beginning of this line right here. Once you have show direction turned on in your display options, maybe I wanna switch over to wireframe. We can see that those still show up and it is still checked, even switching between display modes. So you don't need to set it for each different display mode that you're using with this interactive display. I can just set it once. So I'm gonna turn that off now, go back to shaded work mode and close my display options. We're gonna look at three more tools in this tool palette. We have insert point, remove point, and we have insert segment. So insert point does exactly what you would expect. You click anywhere along a line and it will now insert a new point. So before I do that, I'm gonna select this line. I'm gonna go into the inspector and I'm gonna show controls so we can see exactly where our points are on this object. And now I'm going to use the insert point tool to click another point. And now when I go back and look at those controls, we can see a new point has been added. And now we can edit this object. And you'll notice that those segments are stretching to that point. So that point is not simply a point object. It is a new point along the curve that allows us to manipulate it. So remove point does what you would expect as well. It deletes a point. Now there's two different ways to delete points. I could select a point and I could hit the delete key or I can undo that and I can just use the remove point tool, click on a point, and you'll notice that it just goes back to how it was a minute ago. It didn't actually delete that point and break those two lines and get rid of them. So that can be very useful if you just have too many points along a segment that you wanna clean that up and get rid of them. That's a great way to do it, again, using the delete key or the remove point tool. 
The last tool that we're going to talk about in this tool palette is the insert segment tool. And for this to work, we need closed shapes. So I'm just gonna draw a simple rectangle over here to illustrate how this works. Now I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to click on the insert segment tool. You'll notice there are no tool options in the palette. So I'm going to click on the two midpoints of these two segments and that has now been inserted into the object. That is a great way to split polygons into different pieces. So this could be useful if, for example, I wanted to grab this segment right here and I want to move it in the vertical dimension. So I'm gonna tap my Command key or Control keys on Windows and I can illustrate this by pulling this up and flexing the surface into a new shape. Now I'm gonna undo that and I'm going to now insert the segment from this corner to this corner. That also works. It doesn't have to be from a segment to a segment. It can be from a corner to a corner. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing by moving that segment up vertically and I can now flex that object into a different shape. So inserting segments can be very useful to achieve different kinds of results like this. You can insert a segment into any surface that you want as long as it is a closed shape. And you can subdivide this to your heart's content so that maybe you could then sculpt this geometry into a completely different shape. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to get notified when new videos are released on this channel, click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell icon to get a notification when new videos are released. See you in the next one.